Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. You can find RCE online at rce-cast.com. There's a RSS feed there, as well as a link to iTunes for your favorite podcatcher. Uh, I have again Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and Open MPI. Jeff, thanks again for your time. Hey, Brock. How's it going? All right. So we also have off a website a link to your blog, and you've actually answered some of the questions I've had recently, being an MPI noob myself. Uh, and <laughs> thank you very much for that. And I see it actually sparked a little bit of discussion with some of those questions. I think that was good. And, it's and all good. For people. Yeah. yeah Love no, to answer these kinds of questions. MPI can be uh, quite the mysterious beast. Yep. Yeah, and so uh, you can also find all of our Twitter handles and usual contact information on there, as well as a list of all of our back shows and things that we're looking at getting a hold of. If you have contact information for any of the shows we haven't done yet that's on that list, please let us know on the contact form. Uh, and today t- is kind of, uh, we've been going down a little bit of a path, right? We, we uh, talked about Hadoop a while ago, and Hadoop has come up more recently, and uh, today's show is kind of related to that, right? So yeah, when I was I keep finding these different pieces of software, um, Lucene, Hadoop, Nutch, and Solar, uh, they're all kind of related, and they all live out at Apache.org. And they're all Java-based, but they're also all designed to scale at very large scales. Um, when we had uh, Cloudera on earlier talking about Hadoop, you're talking about massive, you know, multi-petabyte clusters, and I'm sure those have only grown since then. So I think yeah, there's something it, coming on. You know- the definition of HPC is just kind of changing, and this is kind of a contentious topic. You know, it's it's not just the same traditional HPC that we've we've seen. You know, there's a lot of big data number crunching going on uh, that you know loosely could be considered HPC. It takes a lot of compute, a lot of scale, a lot of processors, disk, memory, all that stuff. You know, as a matter of fact, in OpenMPI, we're just going to be adding Java MPI bindings uh, to our development trunk in the in the near future, and the reason for it. Um, is because the Hadoop guys have become interested in using MPI as an IPC channel. You know, they're in the in the MapReduce world, their reduces are becoming so computationally complex that they want to go parallel and they need a, a good IPC mechanism for it. So, you know, some of these things are starting to have very interesting overlap. So what you didn't traditionally consider as HPC, you know, it, it's starting to get in there. And I, I think today's project kind of fits in that same category. Yeah, anything bigger than what you can do in a normal, traditional programming and um, server environment. Got to start doing these things at these massive scales. Yeah, so let's go ahead and introduce our guest today. Yeah, so our guest today is Simon Wilnauer. Um, I believe he's over in the UK, and he's one of the people involved with Lucene. So, Simon, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself? Hey, guys. Um, good to talk to you. Um, thanks for giving this short introduction. Um, <clears throat> my name is Simon, and I'm an uh, Apache Lucene committer, and I also happen to be the Lucene PMC chair, which is kind of an official position. Um, I've been working with Lucene since 2005, and I'm a committer since 2006, and I spend a whole bunch of time uh, on working on this project, um, pushing it forward, um, you know, spreading the word. And um, in my day-to-day job, I I work like 50% on uh, Apache Lucene specific stuff and uh, the other 50% I usually spend on customer projects. Um, I uh, share um, a company with a couple of other people. It's called Search Workings. Um, this is also related to searchworkings.org. It's a community portal about Lucene, Solar, and all this open source uh, search stuff. And I run a conference in Berlin. It's called Berlin Buzzwords. It happens annually, and um, this year it's in June. So what, can you give us a rundown on what Lucene is exactly? Well, Lucene is basically, in a contrast to all the other things I've seen on your podcast, it's, it's just a library. Right, so it's it doesn't do anything. It's not an application. You can't start it up. It's just basically a Java library um, which solves the hard problems in information retrieval, the basic information retrieval, like building an index, uh, retrieving documents, and not analyzing text, um, and making everything in there are uh, very very efficient. So it's basically a high performance search engine library entirely written in Java. So does that mean you entail indexing as well? So, I mean, you mentioned accessing documents and searching. So, assumingly, there's, there's a bit more to it than that, right? 
Right. So um, in, in Lucene, we have uh, we have a notion of a document, which is which basically corresponds to some kind of an entity. Um, but everything is uh, somewhat schema-less, so you don't have to uh, really define the different entities. You can just throw it in and it works. And each document has uh, a set of fields. Um, the, you, can, you can just imagine it as a spreadsheet, a database with one table. Right? And uh, Lucene takes care of building up this table and making this table accessible. So the point of this is is to be able to search it really fast, right? So uh, do you build a separate index for this? I mean, how I actually know very little about search, embarrassingly little about search. Um, so how does you know a typical search work, and and how do you make it fast? Well, in, in a contrast to a database um, in in Lucene or in an in a information retrieval library, you have something called a reverse index or an inverted index. So you basically um, index the, the terms, the unique terms in a document, and then map those terms to the documents where the term occurs in. And everything you do is when you type a query is you get a list of documents those terms occur in. Um, and um, how we make this fast? Well, there's a couple of things uh, we do uh, on a technical level, but um, basically, I mean, where should I start? Um, what, what we do is we, every data structure in Lucene is read-only, right? And we have some, um, some standard um, algorithms in place which write stuff to disk, makes it, uh, makes it persistent, and then people can, can load these uh, indexes and um, fire their searches against it. And, um, you know, once you have updates, you write a new little index to disk and then you merge it in the background together and everything is basically read-only. You don't change anything. All the data structures are highly efficient. Um, you, we make efficient use of, um, of the infrastructure, file system caches and all these kind of things. Um, in contrast to, to a SQL database or something like that, you don't need to do update everything, right? You don't need to update anything in place, not on disk. Um, that, I think, makes a big difference. And um, Lucene is a library which is very, very much tailored to the purpose of um, full-text search. Once you do something else with it, you could easily get into problems. But we can elaborate on this later. So Lucene would not be good for kind of replacing a traditional database if your information is changing rapidly? Well, it, that's that's basically two questions. Um, one is the data is changing rapidly. The other one is uh, can you replace a traditional database with it? The, the the answer to the second question is you can, but you have to denormalize your data model, right? You only have one table. You have to put everything in one table. You can't do more than one. There is some developments which implement joins um, based on Lucene. Um, but they're, they're, they have a lot of limitations. This not, they don't have the power of uh, a SQL store. Um, when, you, when documents update rapidly, um, Lucene still works. We have something called a near real-time search, um, but it works slightly different, and it involves um, more disk I.O., and it's, it's basically less efficient space-wise because in Lucene, you don't have an update procedure. You only have a delete and an add. So basically, if you want to update a document, you delete all or mark all previous documents with the same key as deleted, and then add the new one on top. So it sounds like, like you know, it doesn't have all the features of a full database. Things like MySQL and PostgreSQL and these other databases where we've traditionally stored a lot of data have full text search and par table partitioning and you know the MySQL MBD cluster. Why would I want to use Lacene over one of these traditional systems? Well, the the first problem is um, how is this full text search implemented? I'm I'm not sure about every every implementation, um, but full text search is more more is more than um, than just putting something into a database and start indexing it, right? You could have a whole bunch of analysis in front of it, like you wanna you wanna remove diacritics, you wanna tokenize your text. Um, you want to put synonyms in, uh, remove stop words, do stamming, all these information retrieval related things, um, put some machine learning in front of it. Um, Lucene supports all these kind of things. And it is actually um, made for, for uh, full text-ish full text queries. 
just go one step further and say you have some positional information.